there are different types of torque sensors. If you think of a load cell, you're pushing and pulling on something. Usually it's not moving very far, or if it is moving, it's reciprocating. So say if it's on the end of an arm uh, or uh, say an actuator, it's, it's moving back and forth. And so usually you can deal with that. Even if the cable's whipping around, there are ways to kind of constrain the cable. But otherwise, you know, no problem. Uh, with the torque sensor, that's not always the case. If the torque sensor spins, obviously you start to have trouble if there's a cable attached to it. And so if the torque sensor spins round and round and round, then, you know, what do you do with the cable? So rotary torque sensors are basically a complicated version of a standard torque sensor or what we call a reaction torque sensor. So you think of a load cell and a reaction torque sensor, very much the same. One that you twist, one you push and pull on, same deal, same metal, basically the same way it works. Um, but as soon as you start trying to spin the sensor, you have to add something to allow it to spin without tearing the cable off of it. And those can be slip rings, they could be radio telemetry, um, it could be battery powered, could be induction powered. So there's um, a number of ways to do it. But usually when we start talking about torque, usually the reaction torque is um, a place to start. It's less expensive. Um, sometimes it, it can work better. Um, sometimes it's impossible to make a reaction torque sensor work and you have to go into a, a rotary type. But um, in any case, you know, we'll get into that a little bit more. So a reaction sensor, sometimes called static, um, they don't rotate very much because of the cable. However, if you're um, not rotating all that much, a reaction sensor might be fine. So for example, if your uh, customer say wants to say they make valves and they want to test actuating the valve, and maybe they want to test and see how much torque it takes to spin the valve, or maybe they want to see what happens if you rotate the valve, you know, back and forth 10,000 times, you know, does it leak afterwards or does it uh, become easier to uh, rotate or maybe it gets harder to rotate. You know, these are kind of things that manufacturers study and, you know, during R&D or they might have valves coming off the assembly line and, you know, every so many of them get tested or you can imagine it's an airspace or a super critical application. They might test every single valve to make sure it is within spec as far as how much torque it takes to open and close it. So imagine any kind of um, rotating system that doesn't rotate very far, you could use a reaction torque sensor. Um, you can also use a reaction torque sensor to react the torque of something that's rotating. Can you imagine if you have a motor, if you held the motor housing in your hands and turned it on, the housing would try to jump out of your hands. It would try to spin in the opposite direction of the shaft, right? And imagine if you started trying to you know, attach that shaft to something that you're trying to spin, it could be awful hard to hold the housing, right? As you turn that on, the housing just wants to spin out of your hands. Well, that's the reaction torque on the housing. So you imagine if you can mount the housing of a motor or a gearbox or a pump or anything that spins, if you can react the torque, say, at its housing, then you can use a non-rotating sensor to measure rotating torque. And it's commonly done in engine dynamometers or for you know, testing uh, uh, engines or motors where you have some kind of a brake system and that brake may be spinning, but it's uh, say, um, you know, other, the other part of it that isn't spinning is held stationary and you can mount that to either a reaction torque sensor or sometimes you mount it on bearings and use a reaction arm and load cells. So that's pretty common too. So like engine dynamometers that use say eddy current brakes or water, Breaks. A lot of times those use uh, either reaction torque or even load cells. So just because somebody says torque doesn't mean it actually has to be a torque sensor. It could uh, be a load cell if the torque is able to be reacted at an arm.